Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. This is a cataract with very small people. You can see the size of the people is maybe 3 millimeter or even less, maybe 2.75 millimeter. We have applied all kinds of midriatics, but the people didn't dilate. Let us observe management of this case. The main incision has been placed, a 2.8 millimeter incision on the posterior aspect of the limbus. This is a side port, and this is another side port. The side ports are about two and a half about 3 clock hours away from the main incision and now an air bubble is injected into the anterior chamber. Underneath this air bubble, tripe and blue dye is applied over the anterior capsule. Now this is adrenaline. Let us see if the people dilates with adrenaline. The dye is washed out and we see that adrenaline had zero effect, no effect at all in this case. So there is no other way we have to use either iris hooks or a people expansion device to dilate this people, to expand this people for a safe surgery. there are surgeons who can do surgeries without people expansion device in this situation also. But majority of surgeons including me do not dare to do these kind of surgeries without using a people expansion device. In this case, I have decided to use a BHEX and before applying BHEX, uh, doing, I am doing controlled stress of the people. I wanted two eye hooks, but I did not get. So, with the help of a ball tipped chopper and a eye hook. Um, I have stressed to the people a bit. This is a controlled tear of the sphincter. Behex is a very flexible device and to get a good effect we have to use this technique pupillary stress controlled pupillary stress so that the BHEX can act and we get an optimum sized pupil. Here goes the pupil expansion device. The leading flange is tucked under the iris at on go. Then I take the flange directed at on o'clock. I try to tuck this flange, but I find that it is not tucked properly. I inject some visco and now I go through the right side port which is at around 8 o'clock. Hold the tab at the middle of this flange and tuck it properly. And now on mode flange which is directed towards 10 o'clock is to be tucked. Inject some more visco. And now take the BX forceps, hold the flange at 10 o'clock and tuck it. And the people takes beautiful hexagonal shape. And now, 
This is Visco. Now is the time to do capsular excess. I am using, I attempted to pierce the capsule with the uterator forceps, found it difficult because of genular weakness. So, I take a sharp needle, a bent 26 gauze needle, cut the anterior capsule and now I hold this capsular tag, go anticlockwise along the border of the hexagonal papal, inject visco again and complete the rexis. There is some vitreous upthrust in this case because of probably the peribulbar block. That is why the visco is leaking fast. Hydrodissection is done. And now I inject visco again. And now I go into the anterior chamber. Before that, I enlarge the main wound a bit. And now the FECO needle is introduced into the anterior chamber and in my left hand is the chopper which is designed by me, a small chopper, it is known as Mohantas chopper. This is just a modified Sensky hook, little thicker and stouter and little longer than a Sensky hook. Nice crack, rotate it 180 degree and divide the nucleus into two halves. Each half is subdivided into fragments. Now I am emulsifying this fragment. Now it's <laughs> Ultrasonic energy is set at 70 percent, flow rate is 45 ml per minute, vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury. At this time, the vacuum is reduced to 350, flow rate 35, and the last bit of nucleus is managed. Visco again, this is 2 percent hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. And now I go into the anterior chamber with this. 23 gauze simco and remove the cortex. When the genule is weak, the cortex appears firmly attached to the capsule. Let me repeat this. When the genule is weak, the capsular cortical adhesions appears stronger. And we have to be careful in such cases. We have to hold only the cortical matter and gently pull it. If we 
hold the capsule and pull it, there will be genular dialysis immediately because the genule is already weak. Cortical cleanup has been done and now I inject visco, fill up the anterior chamber, fill up the capsular bag. Enlarge the main wound little more because there is BHEX. Whenever there is BHEX, I enlarge the main wound to about 3 millimeter so that the tip of the curtis goes beyond the flange which is over the iris. Recently, it happened that the trailing haptic pressed the flange and both the flange and the trailing haptic went into the back and then it becomes very difficult to remove the BHEX without cutting it. So, to be on the safer side without much manipulation we should cut the BHEX and gradually pull it out. And now is the time to remove the BHEX ring. The BHEX is disengaged and it is pulled out with the help of the BHEX forceps. And now is the time to I remove the visco that has been used. I am using the Simco cannula and now we can appreciate the sphincter tear. This is because of pupillary stress before application of the BHEX. If we can apply BX without pupillary stress, that is, if the pupillary size is about 4 millimeter, then there is no sphincter damage. Some visco has been removed, and now I take bimanual irrigation aspiration cannoli. irrigation through right side port, aspiration through left and do irrigation and aspiration for some time. So, I hope all the visco has been removed. This is a beta moxifloxacin. Now, the side ports are closed by corneal stromal hydration. And then a final lavage of the anterior chamber with BSS. Anterior chamber is irrigated and aspirated again and now aspiration is stopped and the Simco is uh, placed at the wound and the chamber is nicely formed. Fifth drops of mox is applied over the ocular surface and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.